a famous novelist is desperately trying to survive against a multinational syndicate. The protagonist, Argyle, is a spy who invites a beautiful woman named Range to dance. During the dance, Argyle lifts her on top while maintaining eye contact at land signal. Suddenly, multiple armed men and women surround them. It becomes apparent that Lange knows Argyle's identity and is just playing along. Argyle turns around and pretends to converse with the guards, signaling his accomplice, Kira. Kira promptly activates the smoke, allowing Argyle to escape from those surrounding him. As they make their getaway, Lange suddenly showers them with bullets, hitting Kira and causing her to fall wounded. Argyle rushes to help her, but their commander orders him to pursue Range. Meanwhile, Kira is promised medical assistance. Argyle switches vehicles and follows Lange, engaging in a car chase until his car breaks down due to Lange repeatedly ramming into it. Range manages to get away, so Argyle calls another agent, named Wyatt, who is having coffee at a local cafe. He informs Wyatt that Range will pass by his location prompting Wyatt to swiftly apprehend Range from her motorcycle using just one hand. They then dine at the cafe and interrogate Range, checking her cell phone and discovering that she is an assassin ordered by their same commander to kill Argyle. Shocked by this revelation, Range takes a fluid from her necklace and applies it to her tongue, causing her to die moments later. Upon learning their commander's true intentions, Argyle and Wyatt dispose of their communication device in the coffee. These scenes are part of a novel written by a famous novelist named Ellie Conway, who gained popularity and attracted many reporters and avid fans during her press conference. After the press conference, Ellie immediately continued writing the next chapters of her novel. The story continues in Hong Kong, where Argyle makes a deal with a beautiful woman named Leha to retrieve his file. Argyle trades three gold bars for a phone to arrange a meeting with Leha's employer. Instead of enjoying the place and spending time with Leha, Argyle quickly proceeds with his mission. This marks the beginning of Argyle's journey to obtain the so-called silver bullet. While working, his mother, Ruth, suddenly calls and they have a video call. Ruth greets him and inquires about his novel, becoming a critic of some of his writing. Ellie reluctantly accepts her mother's advice. After discussing Ellie's novel, Ruth bids farewell. Ellie changes the scene between Argyle and Laiha, turning it into a James Bond-like encounter with fireworks in the background. Suddenly, Argyle's dialogue abruptly changed, reflecting Ellie's shifting thoughts and causing the background to vanish. Ellie, now unable to find the right words to say, decided to take a break from the stress that was affecting her writing. As she sat on the train, a man caught her attention and approached her, asking if the seat in front of her was available. Ellie was drawn to him and found herself staring, but eventually snapped out of it and informed him that the seat was free. The man then left to retrieve his belongings, intending to move in front of her. Unexpectedly, another man named Aiden took the seat instead, ignoring Ellie's attempts to inform him that it was already taken. He nonchalantly placed his belongings in the overhead compartment and started reading Ellie's novel right in front of her. Soon, Aiden recognized Ellie's face on the book cover and struck up a conversation with her. All the while, Ellie couldn't help but imagine the character Argyle in Aiden's demeanor though she tried to dismiss the thought. As they conversed, a fan approached Ellie, requesting an autograph. However, it turned out that the fan was actually an assassin, attempting to harm Ellie using a pen equipped with a deadly needle. Swiftly stepping in, Aiden intervened and engaged in close quarters combat with the assailant, revealing himself to be an undercover agent. Amidst the chaos, Ellie continued to visualize Argyle in her mind. Disturbed by the events unfolding, Aiden attempted to calm Ellie down, skillfully fending off the assassins and protecting her. Initially suspicious of Aiden's intentions, Ellie tried to escape, but he followed her, shielding her from attackers along the way. As they fled, Ellie encountered an Asian assassin who was determined to harm her. Aiden quickly placed her inside a nearby cubicle, enabling her to witness his fight against two female adversaries. However, due to her vivid imagination, Ellie continued to envision Argyle within Aiden during the intense battle. Eventually, Aiden managed to gain Ellie's trust, and she decided to join him on his mission. Just as they thought they were safe, Carlos and his armed associates arrived, trapping them in a corner. Ellie attempted to negotiate, but they remained focused on attacking her. Fortunately, the pair managed to leap out of the moving train using a parachute, escaping the danger unscathed. Overwhelmed by the consecutive events, Ellie eventually fainted. When Ellie regained consciousness, 
She found herself lying on a couch in an unfamiliar house. A man approached and introduced himself as Aiden. At first, Ellie failed. He showed Ellie that Carlos and his men were inside her house searching for something. Meanwhile, at their enemy's camp, Director Ritter, the mastermind, reprimanded his guards for failing to kill Ellie. Out of frustration, he loaded his shotgun and shot one of his guards in the back while turning away. Aiden decided to change locations, so they traveled in a car. Inside the car, Aiden sneezed several times because he was allergic to cats. Aiden also explained to Ellie the intentions of those pursuing them. A hacker named Bakunin gathered information about the division, compiling it into a master file on a USB that looked like a silver bullet. Bakunin was killed, and the division wanted to destroy the evidence. When they read about the silver bullet in Ellie's book, they targeted her, thinking she was involved. After a short drive, Ellie and Aiden reached a private plane for their journey. Inside the private plane, Ellie noticeably suffered from fear and anxiety. Aiden comforted her and managed to calm her down. After a long trip, they arrived in London from Colorado. Upon arrival, they discussed their next plans. Aiden explained that they needed to find the master key first to expose the division at Ritter's headquarters. One of the hackers quickly located visuals of Ellie. When Ritter found out, he ordered his hackers to trace Aiden's exact location. Thinking they were safe, Ellie continued the story of Argyll. Argyll entered a car where Wyatt was also present. Curious about the communication device Leha gave him, Argyll and Wyatt tried to open it. They found a chip inside encrypted with data. Knowing Aiden was an agent, Ellie asked about data encryption. Aiden showed her the laptop and helped Ellie understand it. Thinking of a specific location for the novel, Ellie suddenly had an address in mind, which she included in her story. Strangely, Aiden decided to visit the address Ellie mentioned. Through CCTV footage, Ritter learned the exact location where they were headed and quickly deployed his men. The two went to an address with a standing hotel and entered one of its rooms. It was locked, but luckily Aiden knew how to pick the lock, so they managed to get in. Ellie immediately noticed that it seemed like she had been in that room before, and the wall appeared to be a false cover. Aiden was not convinced, but after a while, they discovered a secret passage in the floor. Upon opening it, they found a steel bag containing money, a notebook, and an electrical cord. Ellie quickly took the notebook from Aiden, thinking it might contain clues about the master key location. While discussing, Ritter's men, armed with high-caliber guns and explosives, arrived in a black van. Unbeknownst to them, the two were hiding in the secret passage. When the armed men realized they were gone, one of them immediately reported to Ritter. They were about to leave when Ellie's cat suddenly meowed. With no other choice, Aiden had to fight them before they could be overtaken. Aiden used his combat expertise to take down the armed men, one by one. One of them tried to back up, but Aiden quickly shot him. Another one attempted to throw a flashbang at Ellie. Ellie casually picked it up and, realizing it was a flashbang, threw it at Aiden. Aiden couldn't react in time and was sent flying as the flashbang exploded. While in the air, Ellie imagined Aiden as Argyll coincidentally landing on a chair after the explosion. Ellie quickly apologized for what happened. Inside the room, Aiden handed Ellie another flashbang as he looked at the group using a spoon. Seeing them approaching, he taught Ellie how to kick opponents lying down, like a Dan step. Afterward, he threw a flashbang at the armed men, taking advantage of the situation. While Ellie struggled to kick a lying man, Aiden knocked down the rest. One of them was still conscious, so Aiden showed Ellie how to kick him in the head. Shortly after, Ritter's reinforcements arrived, and they had no choice but to go through the fire exit, leading to the building's rooftop. Aiden quickly barricaded the door, causing Ellie to panic. Aiden spotted a soft surface on the rooftop and immediately told Ellie they would jump onto it. Seeing Ellie hesitating, he grabbed her cat from behind and dropped it without any problems. The cat landed safely on the soft surface. Ritter's men were about to enter, so they had no choice but to pull off an Assassin's Creed move. The two leaped off the building onto the floating soft surface, landing safely, and quickly boarded a boat to escape. Later that day, they checked into a hotel to spend the night. While in the bathroom, Ellie talked to herself and started to hallucinate, seeing Argyll instead of her reflection. Afterwards, she came out of the bathroom, and Aiden went in. Ellie's cat accidentally opened the bathroom door, and Ellie overheard Aiden talking. She heard him reporting to a spy agency, causing her to become alarmed she decided to silently escape. Meanwhile, in Chicago, 
a stranger knocked on Ruth's door. He informed her that there was a call for her, handing her the phone. On the other end, Ellie informed her mother about her location and what had happened to her. Ruth quickly booked a flight and went to London, checking into a hotel. While they were talking, the doorbell rang. Ellie, who was paranoid about the recent events, tried to stop Ruth from opening it. However, it was too late and Ritter appeared at the door dressed casually. When Ellie saw him, instead of showing fear, she seemed relieved and referred to Ritter as her dad. He entered the room pretending to act innocently. Seeing Ellie anxious, Ritter massaged her back and looked at her with an intention to harm her. Ellie continued to share what had happened, mentioning the spy agency where Aiden was involved. Hearing this, Ruth showed a lack of trust in Ellie's story. When Ellie mentioned the notebook they found hidden under the floor, Ritter quickly took it from his bag and read its contents. While reading, Ritter smiled at the contents, pretending to be concerned about Ellie's story. He continued to search for possible clues about the Master Key's location. Suddenly, Aiden breached the door, holding a gun and taking Ritter as his hostage, causing panic for Ruth and Ellie. Aiden then threatened Ritter to reveal his true identity, eventually exposing himself and leaving Ellie shocked. Upon hearing this, Ruth pulled out her gun and pointed it at Ellie. Fortunately, Aiden quickly shot her and knocked Ritter unconscious. Still shocked by the turn of events, Ellie asked Aiden why he shot her mother. Aiden calmed Ellie and assured her that they were not her real parents. The two quickly escaped, and once they were downstairs, Ellie hesitated. Aiden reassured her that he was telling the truth. While in the car, Ellie cried upon learning the truth because she had grown attached to the people she thought were her parents. She was shocked to discover that Director Ritter and Ruth were actually members of the organization. Aiden didn't disclose everything at once, understanding how challenging it could be for Ellie to process such information. Director Ritter and Ruth had manipulated Ellie, making her believe she was their daughter. Ellie couldn't comprehend why anyone would do that, and she was in a very confused state of mind. The next morning, they arrived at a secluded location where Alfred Solomon, also known as Alfie, a CIA agent, awaited them. He was a character in Ellie's book and she was thrilled to meet him face to face. Alfie showed Ellie around his farm and house, opening a hidden room behind a wall to reveal his office. He took the opportunity to disclose to Ellie that she was an agent in the CIA. From the monitor, he flashed her picture with information, also revealing her true name as Agent Rel Kyle. Unable to believe this, Ellie was left in a state of disbelief. Ellie, filled with disbelief, confronted Aiden, suspecting that Alfie had deceived her. However, Aiden stood by Alfie's revelations and insisted on their accuracy. Still in shock, Ellie was suddenly punched by Aiden. Instinctively, she parried his punch, unable to comprehend her own actions. Aiden continued to attack her until she managed to defeat him at Director Ritter's headquarters. At the headquarters, they began examining the contents of the book that Ellie had recorded using her advanced glasses. Meanwhile, Aiden continued revealing everything, showing Ellie pictures and the true identity of the people she believed were her parents. He explained that she was one of the best CIA agents but, after an accident that left her in a coma, the division had brainwashed her into believing she was a writer. Visual triggers were given to make her memories resurface without her fully knowing her real identity. The division's plan succeeded resulting in the creation of four books that helped them stay ahead. Aiden also showed some photos of them together, including Kira, and explained that the characters and events Ellie wrote about in her book were true, as they were memories from her past operations as an agent. Gradually, Ellie began to realize the truth and finally believed Aiden. However, their conversation was interrupted when Alfie suddenly called for them from inside the office. Upon entering, Alfie learned that Bakunin had sent the master key to someone named Saba Albad. They immediately embarked on a mission to find Saba and went to Arabia. Before entering, they had to undergo intense screening, and, once cleared, they attended a party where they disguised themselves in elegant clothes. During the party, Aiden lifted Ellie, similar to Argyle lifting Larange, while dancing. Unknown to them, a mysterious woman watched from above. In the midst of a passionately slow dance, they were caught in the moment and almost kissed, but their moment was interrupted by a high-ranking guard. Ellie was then informed that Saba wanted to speak with her. Saba recognized her and engaged in conversation for a while before giving her the silver bullet. While inside the room, Ellie accessed the contents of the bullet and discovered something that heightened her concerns. She quickly sought out Aiden to inform him of her findings. However, 
Their conversation was interrupted once again, this time by Ruth, who arrived with the division. Ruth offered them drinks, but Aiden switched his drink with Ruth's. When Ruth drank first, she revealed that Ellie had previously worked for the division as one of their best assassins. Ellie, stunned, found a flash drive and discovered her own name on it. As her memories began to resurface, she recalled that she was the one who had killed Bakunin. Overwhelmed by all of this information, Aiden attempted to confront Ruth, but the sedatives kicked in, causing Aiden, Ruth, and Ellie to lose consciousness. Moments later, Ellie regained consciousness and witnessed Ritter roasting the silver bullet in the fireplace. Ritter then began to brainwash her once again, instructing her to convince Aiden to disclose Alfie's location. They headed towards Aiden, prepared to carry out Ritter's instructions, who is being beaten up. Ellie tries to talk to him, but Aiden triggers Ellie's memories of their past together. Suddenly, Ellie shoots Aiden in the chest, causing her to immediately lose consciousness. When Ellie regains consciousness, she aligns herself with the division directors and attempts to locate Alfie using a tracking device they discovered Aiden wearing. Ellie successfully locates Alfie's whereabouts, much to the director's delight. However, unbeknownst to them, Ellie's actions are all part of her own plan. She intends to send the contents of the master key to Alfie, but her unauthorized attempt fails. Ritter witnesses this and attempts to attack Ellie, but she proves to be too strong and knocks Ritter and the directors down. Together with her cat, Ellie flees the building. Unexpectedly, Aiden regains consciousness and takes down the guards. He then unties himself and recovers from the gunshot wound. Meanwhile, Ellie finds herself in a room filled with guns when Aiden enters. Initially, Aiden mistakenly views Ellie as an enemy, but after she explains the circumstances, he calms down. Ellie reveals that Kira had been shot in the heart on a mission but survived due to a technique called the vascular corridor, which she also used when shooting Aiden. This technique allowed the bullet to bypass the heart and pass through the vascular corridor as long as the blood flow was stopped. Ellie had learned about this technique from Kira herself, who had confirmed it five years prior. In the end, Ellie and Aiden reconcile and team up once again, firing at the numerous division agents who attempt to retaliate. They perform a dance in the midst of the agents, with Ellie lifting Aiden up this time. Running out of bullets, they decide to enter an event. Carlos follows them, forcing them to engage in a firefight. However, the gas is hit, flooding the area. Fearing an explosion or fire, they cease firing. Pushed to her limit, Ellie comes up with a planned escape by placing a knife in her shoes. With skillful and swift movements, she systematically takes down Carlos's men one by one. Despite a few remaining agents, Ellie continues to move swiftly through the gas, overwhelming the division agents. Carlos engages her in combat, but Ellie's expert moves prove too much for him, and she defeats him. With only a few agents left, Ellie accurately shoots them down. Frustrated by the agent's failure, Ritter himself descends to kill them, armed with a shotgun. He attempted to shoot Ellie, however, Ellie's cat attacked Ritter like a tiger. Eventually, Aiden shot Ritter to end his life. Finally, Ellie managed to start uploading the file that the division wanted to stop her from transferring to Alfie. She was willing to go to any extent, so Ruth hypnotized Ellie and made her turn against Aiden. Ellie realized that she was probably not the kind of woman she considered herself to be. There was a dark side to her, and now slowly, it was all coming back. On the other hand, Aiden wanted Ellie to believe that, though she might have done some bad things in the past, she was a good person. He wanted her conscience to prevail, though he knew it was an extremely difficult task. In the end, when Ellie turned on Aiden, he gave up, as he just couldn't fight her. Ellie was hypnotized and had no clue what she was doing. Ruth was playing a tune that triggered her and made her forget who she was. Ellie was just about to kill Aiden, doing the same thing he learned from Aiden. Fortunately, Kira, one of her colleagues who had worked on several missions with her, knocked down Ruth. The music stopped, and Ellie came back to her senses. Ellie and Aiden uploaded the file to the interface, from where Alfie downloaded it. The three of them escaped on a speedboat while Ellie and Aiden kissed. The division was exposed though the people never got to know that the timid writer was the one who had led the mission and saved the world. Ellie completed her fifth book, and the readers loved it. At the press conference, Alfie, Kira, and Aiden attended. Before the movie ends, one of her fans in a yellow shirt asks a question. Ellie's face showed surprise when she saw that the fan was Argyll, making him a real person. And the movie ends.